Now, tell me about the 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 art style, first of all, that you've chosen for this. Obviously, you did it the 2D, but it's got this hand-drawn kind of look, but almost kind of like, I want to say almost like a Greek art. You're, the characters, the kids all look kind of like, almost like versions of pen kind of thing. I don't know if that's what you were going for or if that's just something I'm taking out of it. So talk to me a little bit about the art. Um, well, there's actually, I, I can't remember if I talked about this the last time we talked, but uh, I met a bunch of friends on the Star Wars website. Did we right. talk about that? Yeah, I moved, yep. I moved in with one of them. <laughs> okay. And he uh, he used to draw like a long time ago, and he was a really good artist. And uh, he has a he was the one who drew these drew the drawings for the game. I had to kind of convince him to draw again. And there's kind of like a whole cool story behind that because he had to kind of find confidence in his drawing again. I mean, he hasn't drawn like that for a good like three or four years. So like through this game, he's kind of reconnected with his like old kid self. It's just weird to see because he found these drawings that looked exactly like the stuff that ended up in the game and. So he kind of had this whole revelation working on the art, and what he was trying to go for was uh, he was influenced by a lot of like Super Nintendo games games that he played um, with that whole uh, like you can see the ground like the ground detail and whatnot. I guess he a bunch of games he played had that. He was influenced by a lot of that stuff, but when I look at his art style, like I see um, like Bible school drawings. I don't. That might sound totally weird. No, to no, people. I, I, I get, I get your, I get your reference. But you might want to explain it for other people who don't. But I, I, I know where you're going with it. Yeah, you know, like when I was in Bible school when I was a kid, like they give us these little uh, cartoons or whatever to color in, and uh, you know, for part of the lecture or whatever, like it'd be Mary and baby Jesus and you color it in. Like the whole style that those drawings had, like are like really look like the drawings. I don't know if that's what he's influenced by, but that's what I see when I look at it. It's just kind of okay, interesting, I guess. But yeah. And once again, I'm guessing you worked on the music. No, actually, I did oh, this time. Okay. Yeah, um, the so guy who worked on soundtrack then. Yeah, the guy who uh, worked on it this time. His name is Johnny Martyr, and he worked on the sound effects uh, for Honor Vengeance too. So I've worked with him in the past. Right. And uh, I had just when I started working on this game, I just finished recording like a little album for like myself in my room, a little rock album or whatever. So I was a little burnt out on recording music, and I thought it would be cool for him to <laughs> like come in and do his whole take on it, because I've never worked with a musician like that before, so I thought it would be cool to kind of have him bounce ideas, you know, have him to bounce ideas off of, and he actually had a lot of really awesome ideas that ended up in the game, like, when you get closer to an enemy, like, the music starts to distort, like, that was, that was totally his idea, he came oh, up with a lot okay. of cool things, yeah, so I was really happy to, like, have him do the, like, just have a straight-up audio guy to work with and have him bring new ideas to the table, it was really cool. Right. Now, talk about the the gameplay elements themselves. I a li- it almost looks a little bit. And I, I know that's not quite how it works with the puzzles, but it's got a, a little bit of a scribble knots kind of vibe. That not not by writing it out, but because they're in your trailer, you're showing drawing a bridge and the various ways of drawing it to get across yeah. the gap or something like that. So it's got that kind of feel to it. So talk a little bit about that. About the bridge puzzles? Well, just about the puzzles in general. How how you went across, you know. The, the types of puzzles that somebody can expect and, and just the, the gameplay in general. Okay, uh, well, there's towards the beginning, it's a lot of platforming. Um, it's <laughs> I've had a lot of people over the play test, and I can safely say that the game is pretty challenging. Like, the platforming aspect's pretty difficult, uh, reminiscent okay. of kind of like Super Meat Boy and all of the hardcore platformers or whatever. But in between the platforming, uh, there's the bridge puzzles that you see in the trailer, and the actual puzzles themselves... Um, I was looking up like ancient, uh, I guess they wouldn't be ancient, like old school puzzles like Sudoku type, type stuff. Okay. Or Sudoku, Sudoku or however you say it. And like there's this uh, this type of this puzzle. I can't remember what it was called. I think it was called um, Trail or something like that. But it was basically where you have to connect these notes together and, and give make sure every single one of them uh, has a significant number of connections and are all connected to each other properly and whatnot. And I kind of copied, I, I changed the rules a little bit. But pretty much in the game, like when you come across these puzzles, you have to. There's little numbers on them, and uh, so say if there's a number two, that means that node needs two connections. So you kind of just go through these nodes and connect them together until all of the nodes are satisfied to build these bridges, and then okay. you use the bridges to uh, continue and progress through uh, the world. So that's pretty much it. And towards the end, uh, the gameplay changes. It's more of like kind of a walking around peaceful type of vibe. But for the majority of the game, it's uh, platforming and the bridge puzzles that you'll be solving. Very interesting. Now, we've talked about this before between the first two games, but what you know it's obviously especially because, you know, you're 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 going to school, 
for yeah. the for design. Tell me about what you've learned just in between Honor Inventions Two and and this title. Just you know, just in in the way you go about designing, in the way just your thought processes towards creation. Yeah, well, it's like I I, I a lot of people kind of have the feeling or thoughts that like I came down here I learned a lot in school but really what I learned by coming down here and being by myself is I learned a lot about who I am as a person mm -hmm. and like and like what makes me happy in life and who I want to be with and all that great stuff you know and that's what has really kind of furthered me as a creator or an artist or whatever is I I've kind of accepted myself if that makes sense and like who I am and what I'm here to tell through my stuff right and and so like it's like all the stuff that I've learned in the past year has just been me kind of analyzing myself and analyzing like the games that I grew up with, the games that I enjoy, and just kind of seeing like how I can contribute um, with video games because obviously there's a lot, a lot of stuff to be pioneered, and I think it's just so exciting to be a part of it, you know. So I mean, that's really the main growth uh, where my growth has come from is just by analyzing uh, myself and kind of looking further into game design. So very intriguing. Now when. Might people? I, I know you said maybe in the summer sometime, but are are you closer to a release date for this? And, it, we're t and it's going to be XBLIG, correct? Yeah, that's right. Um, the release date is really tentative at this point. Um, okay. It's it's definitely like super close to being done. I like. I don't know if the people listening know, but there's been another uh, XBLIG uprising in the talks. Yes. And uh, I've kind of been a part of that, like getting a hold of other developers and whatnot, and I'm. It, it's looking like it might be taking off um, around September, so oh, okay. I, I might have the possibility of releasing then. If, but let's say like none of this works, the uprising doesn't happen, and uh, all that, then maybe I can shoot for an August release. It, it's okay. definitely close, like within the next few months. So how do you know? I mean, just again, you, you know, th through the course of your games, how do you know now that you're that you're ready for release. So I said the first time I said you're you're not shooting in the dark. I mean you have an idea that your game is finished or so on and so forth, but yeah. as you've gotten more experience, how how do you know what level of polish or or just you know just talk to me to about, about knowing oh, when you're ready to hit the send button and send it off to the publishers. <laughs> yeah, no. That's something I've struggled with because I have a tendency like the main problem I saw like looking back at Iron Vengeance One is that I released it too early because I was super amped up about it. Mm -hmm. Like that was my dream game, like to make this three D space shooter and whatnot. So like there wasn't really an a area where I play tested it and polished stuff. I was like I was just so amped up and it, I just had to release it. But now that I have a couple of titles under my belt, like I can kinda make that feeling die down a little bit and like it's more of me looking critically and doing a lot more editing and polish and like before, like last year, I'd say that I was eager to release games. Now I'm, like, I'm constantly looking at like what needs to be improved and like obsessing over every little detail and whatnot. But I, I think now that that feeling's kind of died down, it gives me more of an opportunity to polish a little bit better, you know. Because when you're all amped up about releasing a game, you know, you're probably gonna look over little things and go and release it, you know. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. So do you think that the the level of nerves will go will will be lessened, or do you think is, is it still nerve wracking every single time when you send it? I'm I'm terrified to release this game, like without a doubt. I'm super terrified because like so much is riding on it, and it's like I get it. Like when I play through the game, like I feel something special, but I don't know if other people will see that or not. You know, I'm just like I'm, I am totally in the dark, and I don't know. I, all I know is it's the game I wanted to make, and like whether or not people will see what I want people to see is in question. You know, so I, I, yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> Well, that's the kind of thing. It's 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 interesting because I guess my question I've never asked this of a developer before, so you'll be the first one for this. <laughs> so I, awesome. My question, I guess, because so many of of them say that same kind of thing. I'm just so terrified. To do. So why do you put yourself through this? I guess if you're so terrified, <laughs> I I would just be like, I'm so scared to do it. I'll just never ever release it ever. It'll be my little secret, and I'll well, play it and enjoy it myself. So how do you get past that the terror and and make yourself hit send or again or again or why do you put yourself through this? <laughs> uh, well, see, I I do run the risk of like making stuff and never releasing it because. Like, I can't tell you how many, like, songs I've wrote that are just, like, so out there. I'm like, I'm never releasing this. I'm just going to keep working on it, keep working on it. And then <laughs> I, th I think we all, like, all indie developers and all indie people in general, like, suffer this. Like, they just, they obsess over things and they get into this, like, isolated mindset and they just never release anything. 
And I try my best to push back and just push that feeling aside so I can release stuff. Mm-hmm. But to do th- to do that, you have to not think about it because, like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not really a people person. And like last year, twelve thousand people played my games. Like I can't think about that because that drives me totally insane. Right. To think that many people are you know checked it out or whatever. So I don't know. I just have to not think about like the details and just get it get it where I I'm happy with it and just do it. You know, <laughs> see what happens. Like I can't stress out and over details and whatnot. So in that case, what part of the process makes you the happiest? Uh, hmm. That's definitely just like the heart of development is when I'm the happiest. But it, it feels weird to say that because I get like so depressed. Like it's it was like th- this the, for the tenth it was like three months of me like isolated in my room. Like even my roommate would say, "Dude, you you come out of your room looking like you just killed somebody. Like you were so depressed." <laughs> Because I, I would come home from school and just start working on the game, and like I couldn't okay. stop thinking about the game. Like every sing- I'd be at school and I'd like stop listening to the lecture and start working on the game on my laptop, and like it was just the game, the game, the game. And I, but I, I like and my roommate was like, "You look so depressed," and I did feel kind of sad, but I was also like really happy. I don't know, it's, it's just really weird. Like being in that whole like creative state, like a bunch of awesome stuff goes on, and mm-hmm. it's definitely it's definitely better than releasing it and having to deal with like all the trash talk that like inevitably becomes, you know. Like that always comes. People want to talk crap on the comments section and all that. So it's it's nice to have this whole idea of what the game is in my mind, and then when I have to release it, people come up with their own interpretation. You know, it's nice to kind of have it to myself. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. One thing you do have to keep in mind with the comment section of any forum is you've always got angry trolls out there. I mean, look at look at. <laughs> I don't know if you've been following, but look at what Blizzard has gone through since Diablo three came out. Oh, I no, mean, I've all that. You have not? No, no, what's that about? Oh, just the venom that people are spewing at them because it it's not the game they remember from 12 years ago, so therefore it is ruined forever, you know, kind of yeah. thing. And just <laughs> just the absolute hatred and, and you know, the, the, the vitriol that, that people are, oh. <laughs> so yeah. some of it you have to, you know, sometimes when you read some reviews and people are like, oh, such and such sucks or such and such is awesome, you know, you kind of have to take that, and and you know, and either learn from the criticism or accept the you know those kind of things, and and take out the useful parts of it. But some of it is just you got to realize there's just pent up nerd rage too, and you've just yeah gotta... for sure. Yeah. So I didn't realize that was going on. I remember the Mass Effect three ending. People got all raged up. I actually oh, liked that. Oh yeah. Did you people, really? Oh yeah, but people hated it. So I don't know. I I was in the well. See, I hated the ending, but not to the point where I was like. EA and, and and Bioware are evil, and I want my money back. And, and I remember at the I, at the time I was joking around. I think I I said to to Luke that night, like, all right, I want my sixty dollars back for this one, <laughs> and for right. two, and for one. Yeah. yeah. But, but realistically, you know, that ending. While I don't, I, I see where they were going. I understand what they were doing. I don't agree with the with the 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 choices they made with it. And you know, that, that, that's a discussion for another time. Yeah. Um, but it didn't ruin, quote unquote, the experience of the entire universe for me. I'm curious to see how they'll get out of it. But mm-hmm. so, yeah, that that kind of that kind of rage. I mean, but you see that with everything. I don't know if you right. watched any of E3. I mean, there's people who are angry, just really angry at Nintendo or Sony or Microsoft. Mm-hmm. And then there's yeah. us who just made fun of Nintendo for an hour and a half on our show. But oh. um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, yeah. so I, it's one of those things. So how do you do that? Because 